Welcome to another one of Cara TV's episodes. Um, I'm delighted this week to have a long-standing uh, connection of mine, uh, James Proctor from Phase 3 Consulting. Um, they are a fantastic business that have really, really grown over the recent years. So I'm really, really pleased to have James on board. Um, I'm not going to give away too much of what Phase 3 are or what they do. I'm going to let James introduce you. So um, let's, you know, not hang about. James, over to you. Okay. Yes, so phase three are people, technology, consulting and services providers. Um, we're the leading providers of independent um, HR and payroll system support, essentially. So we help clients to select, develop, implement, re-implement, and then manage on a long-term basis their HR and payroll solutions. So that means that we work with the likes of applicant tracking systems, core HR solutions, payroll solutions, um, learning management, um, and anything that you would wrap in the category of uh, a system that helps you to manage people. And so from a, a data security perspective, as you can imagine, we have lots of sensitive information that we process. Sure you do. Yeah. Okay, so you said there about helping people and stuff like that. And certainly over the last year, the pandemic, I think there's been a lot of um, helping, mental helping, well-being and all of that kind of stuff. Does that fit into part of what you do, looking after uh, the employees from the business? Absolutely, yes. And um, in the last 12 months at Phase 3, we've implemented a new AI solution, um, which oh, okay. is um, called Wellbot. Um, and Wellbot helps us to keep a track and a finger on the pulse of how people are feeling. And it helps push out um, alerts and information to people. So it reminds us regularly to take a drink, to have a rest from the screen. Um, it reminds us um, to sort of do some mindfulness exercises. It gives us exercises to do with fingers and things like that. So when you're used to sitting at a desk. But what it also does is it, it tracks how people are feeling. And then it starts to sense if people aren't feeling too great and then it pushes them towards some of the employee benefits that we offer like an employee assistance program with um, counseling support um, so it's it's always looking for ways to try and improve the employee well-being experience essentially so so this well bot is that something just internal for phase three or is that a service you provide out to all of your clients as well? no it, it's we've purchased it so it's it's a um a software that you can buy um and well but are a a company in their own right and they provide the solution um you can see the details on our website on the system selection tool um, but that's just one of, of a number of suppliers that does a similar kind of um thing in terms of employee benefits but certainly for us in the last 12 months recognizing that remote working some people working completely alone um with yeah. no other members of the household um we wanted to do something extra just to make sure that we are looking after our people well, that, that, that is something I, I am going to have a look at uh, probably when we come off this video, have a look at the, uh, the phase three well bot. Um, yeah. That does sound very, very interesting. So uh, as I said right at the very beginning, um, phase three, you've gone through quite um, not an aggressive, but you have grown rapidly uh, over the mm. last couple of years. Um, and with the pandemic and working from home, how did you find that? Did, did you find that it, with the working from home, it stops the kind of company growth or did you find actually there was no difference? No, I mean, in any, if anything, it was the opposite. So um, we've onboarded eight or nine new employees during the last 12 months. Um, so we were recruiting at the time that the lockdown and the pandemic started, um, and we continue to recruit throughout. Um, we've continued to grow the company both in revenue and in terms of uh, number of employees over the last 12 months, which is obviously a very positive uh, position to be in compared to many others. And we, we know that we're very fortunate in that. Um, um, but the transition for us to working from home wasn't that difficult. We obviously as consultant, um, consultant based organization, half of the team are used to working on the road, being on client customer sites, 
um, working at, on the corner of somebody else's desk in a cupboard under the stairs, you know, that's the kind of thing that you get used to. So um, we've always been set up to be able to work remotely. I think the teams that found it a little bit more difficult were the sort of managed services teams, um, just because they are used to having that more collaborative style in the office. Yeah. Um, but again, they were all set up to work from home anyway, because a number of them did for a couple of days a week. So if anything, it just increased the amount of homeworking that we had rather than um, having to do anything in terms of setup. And the only thing that people go into the office for at all is to access the printer and the franking machine when we send payslips out to those people who still cling on to their paper payslip. Um, so we've, we've been really fortunate in terms of the technology and the way that we've been able to, to work remotely yeah. and, and still collaboratively. Having worked with Phase 3 for a number of years, you certainly do embrace new technology and push things forward. And I mm -hmm. think you were probably one of the first clients that we kind of removed the server from the business. So you're kind of serverless as yeah. a business because all of the applications that you now use are cloud-based, yeah. which, you know, having, as I said, the business growing and you've moved, you've moved a location a number of times, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that really did help with uh, with that relocation side of things and not having too much downtime. Um, would you say that's a fair uh, assumption? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the massive risk um, prior to us moving to that true cloud sort of position um, was really that, you know, our CRM was hosted on a server and somebody kicked it accidentally in the office one day and we'd had no CRM for a week. Um, so, you know, that's a position that nobody wants to be in. Um, and and obviously, with the fact that we're working remotely, we want to work collaboratively um, on documents and projects and, you know, tenders and bids, etc., um, as well as for the customer. Um, having access to all of our systems completely remotely and in sync was one of the biggest benefits for us. So the the transition from office to office isn't difficult. The only thing we take with us is the um, the router. <laughs> um, and from a home working or working remotely perspective, as long as you've got an internet connection, you're absolutely fine. Yeah. And when you are moving office to office, don't forget there is a pool table as well somewhere I've heard. <laughs> Yes, yeah. well, it, not at the moment, but yeah, it is coming back as we move offices again uh, in uh, in June, um, okay. which we're all looking forward to. But yes, it's uh, it certainly does make the process a lot easier rather than having to manually yeah. sort of uninstall everything and have downtime for everybody working from home. The, the first time we moved offices, I think the VPN that we used to get into the server when we worked remotely was down for two days, um, which wasn't ideal. So from our perspective, it's certainly a lot simpler. Fantastic. Good, good. Uh, and do you're, you're big ambassadors of Microsoft 365 because you use SharePoint for a yes. lot of the collaboration. How do yeah. you find that? Is that good for you or...? Yeah, it, it works well. I think the the challenge is more with OneDrive and, and the speed of it syncing um, and, and sometimes ending up with duplicate copies of things. But because we collaborate a lot with the customer um, as well through our SharePoint and OneDrive, it, it means that we can manage the process a lot easier. We can manage access much easier. So although we've got our core users that are the Phase 3 team, um, certain team members don't have access to certain subsets of data like manage payroll data for example but within each customer's area we've also got the shared folders that we share data with customers in and they have uh, external access to our 365 to be able to right. share that information so, so, you, so you've kind of it's like your your business intranet you segregated it so yes. that only certain people have got access to what they're um, allowed or approved yes. access to and then you've given guest access out to external people to have an input on phase three as well. Yes, and they've got two-factor authentication with that guest access as well, which is um, obviously massively beneficial layer. for them. Yeah. yeah, the additional yeah. layer of security that you need. That's great. Mm -hmm. So having taken on SharePoint and using it as a uh, collaboration tool for the business and the employees, did, was that quite a driver to some of the other app other applications that you're now using and collaborating with other vendors that you want, or one of the factors that you look is, is it a cloud application or is it a still 
install on a premise uh, on a server yeah um, yeah i mean so from our perspective we we've, we've just been through a system selection process ourselves for our new payroll solution that we're working with clients um and absolutely one of the main factors was it had to be cloud hosted um and you know that we've managed to achieve that i think it it's much simpler um for us and for the client we know it's secure um, in terms of the level of accreditations that the providers have. Um, and for our own ISO accreditation, we want to make sure that absolutely anything that we do massively reduces risk um, in terms of any kind of hosting ourselves on premise. Um, and I suppose the question is, why would, why would you want to um, these days? There really is no need is, for yeah. on-prem. <laughs> yeah, there, there is a lot of argument about that. But you know, you, you were saying there about the ISO accreditations. Obviously, yeah. you know, Microsoft have got huge uh, amount of accreditations and their data centers are so, so secure that yeah. you, you are very confident that your business confidential data, all those mm -hmm. HR records, is secure in a totally encrypted environment. Yeah. And that can be one of the challenges in terms of tenders, I'll be honest, because... Often um, when you complete an attender response, they want to know about your levels of security. And we're kind of in a situation where well, we rely fully on Microsoft in terms of their provision of um, their accreditations, et cetera. And Microsoft have got some really helpful documents in terms of um, the accreditation certifications, yeah. their methods that you can share with, with clients. Um, but that's one of the only challenges that we face because sometimes customers don't realize that actually everything is completely encapsulated in that Office 365 installation. We have nothing outside of that that we need to be assessed on. Fantastic. Great. And, you know, probably one of the last questions, and I know I'm taking up your time here, um, but James, would you say that being in the cloud has enabled Phase 3 to be more agile and grow faster as a business? Yes, absolutely. And I think more than that, it's enabled us to be more collaborative. Um, and in particular, Teams um, has been something that we use very widely. Um, we have regular um, sort of yoga sessions every Monday. We have mindfulness sessions on a Wednesday, all delivered through Teams. Um, but integrating Teams with other aspects of Office 365, using Planner, using um, a lot of the task management tools as well, um, it's helped us to grow quickly, collaboratively, um, and work with customers in a much better way as well. Um, so, as I said, why wouldn't you? <laughs> so, so coming back to you were talking about Teams, we obviously mentioned uh, OneDrive and SharePoint. Um, mm -hmm. There are a number of applications in Microsoft 365. Um, not the most common one, so not picking Word, Excel, Outlook, or PowerPoint. What's your favorite application and how does it help you? Um, I think I probably would say Planner. Um, yeah. we, we don't use it for collaborating with customers, um, but from our internal perspective, um, we find it really helpful in terms of our internal projects on growth development um, and using the, um, obviously, assigning tasks to people, managing Kanban boards. It's, it's all the, the kind of tools that you want internally, but we very much keep that protected from our customer-facing systems, which we use external systems for, um, things like teamwork, for example, for um, project management. Um, but Plan has certainly been something that we've used quite widely, and in particular with the marketing team. Cool. Brilliant. Well, James, um, as I said, it was a pleasure having you on board and uh, just talking about phase three and how you're using cloud solutions to help deliver your business. Really, really appreciate your time and uh, effort uh, talking to us. So um, for all the folks out there, if you've got any HR questions, I really, really do highly recommend phase three. Get in touch with James. Um, obviously, mention uh, Rob Gibbons or Cara Technology, and he'll look after you even better. <laughs> um, but uh, James, again, thank you very much for coming online. Um, it's been a real pleasure having you. And for everybody else, keep in touch, subscribe to our channels, and watch out for another episode from Cara TV. Thank you.